Welcome to a Wobbly Grid for Unity tutorial by PeerPlay. Here you can see the final result of this tutorial. We're going to make a grid system using C Sharp to instantiate blocks. We will manipulate the height of set and color and animate the blocks through some mathematics. So let's get started. Let's start off with a new project. To build our grid, we need a few things. We need a C Sharp script. We need a object to be instantiated and we also need a material to be applied so let's first make the object so let's go to game object 3d uh, cube and let's drag the cube into assets so now we've got a prefab of a cube let's delete this one and go over to a sphere and let's also make a prefab of a sphere now we also need a material so let's make a new material and let's call this uh, block material and we can leave it at that and the fourth thing that we need is a script because we want to um, make a grid system all through a C sharp script so let's go over here create a new script and let's call this a wobbly grid So now we've got actually all the assets that we need to create our scene. Now go over to game object and create an empty. We will rename the empty game object to grid. And on the grid we want to apply the C sharp script that we just made. Now let's open the script. Let's start building out our grid system. The first thing we need for a grid system is to have something to instantiate and that will be a game object. So let's start with a public game object and we will call this a block. And also we need to apply some material to the block. So let's make a public block material so we can choose the material that we've just created. So the next thing we need to declare is our grid size. So let's make a public int and we'll call this grid X and grid Z. So we can declare in our inspector what the size of our grid will be. Now what we want to do is we want to instantiate a lot of blocks and we want to put them into an array so we can talk to every one of them. So under game object, let's make a new game object, but now let's make it an array and we'll call this block list. Now the length of this block list will be the grid X times its Z. So we need to calculate what the total will be of the X and Z. So let's make a private int and call this grid size. Now in the start function, we will say that grid size will be equal to grid X times grid Z. Now what we can do is we can set the size of our block list array. So we'll say uh, block list is equal to a new game object and the game object will be the length of grid size. Now for example if we make a grid of 10 by 10, 10 by 10 is 100. The length of block list will be 100 upon start of the script. So now we're going to build our grid system. And the way we're going to do this is we will create two for loops into each other. So for um, int x equals 1, um, if x is smaller or equal to um, grid x, then x will be plus plus. And inside of this for loop, we will create another for loop. If int z is one, z is smaller or equal to uh, grid z, then z will be plus plus.
Now inside of the second for loop here, we can instantiate our uh, objects. And the way this is working is if we have a grid of uh, 20 by 20, then it will first go to the first row here of the one of the 20 and it will create 20 in its uh, C position. And if it's completed, then it will go to uh, number two and create complete that row of 20 into its C position. And then we will we'll have a total of 20 by 20 blocks instantiated. So let's start instantiating our object. So let's say game object. And we'll call this um, block instance equals game object instantiate and the name of this is the game object block. Now we want our block instance to be a uh, parent of the transform that this script is running on. So we'll type in block instance dot its transform dot its parent is this transform. And we will also change the name of this block instance so we can track it a little bit easier in the uh, game view. And we'll say its name is block. Um, and I'll put a spacebar here in between. Plus uh, some number. And for this, we need to make a new number that will um, be incremented here every time. So we will create a, another int block index. So let's create that. So we'll make it private and we'll call this block index. So here we can now type block index and close that one. Now we need to place our block instance inside of the block list so we can keep track of the object. So let's type in uh, block list and the position of the index is the um, block index that we just created. Is the block instance. So now the game object will be added into the array of block list. Of course, we also need to increment the block index every uh, time that we run this for loop. So block index will be plus plus every time. And now we will talk to the block list block index instead of the block instance to set its transform position to create the grid system that we want. So let's type in the block list um, block index that we just created. And let's talk to its transform dot position. And we'll say that its position is a new vector three. And in its vector three, we can say it's X, Y, Z. So its X will be X. Its Y will be for now zero. And we will type in here Z. Now at a later point in this tutorial, we will multiply this X by some different number. And if we filled in here zero, then we can't multiply it because zero will always be zero. That's why I declared here one. So to make the uh, position be uh, from the zero point, we can type in here, it's X minus one. And the same for it's C minus one. So this should work to instantiate a grid system. So let's head over to uh, Unity and save this script. Now we've got our script here and we first have to select our objects. So let's 
get hit the cube in here and let's say that the material we don't need that anymore and we have to declare the uh, grid here so let's say 20 by 20 let's fire that up and as you can see it makes a grid system of 20 blocks in its position X and in its position Z so if we would um, fill in something different here so I could fill in 8 by 16 it will make a grid of 8 by 16 and as you can see it will create blocks with all these numbers that we declared in our script up until 127 and in our block list it will show all the different instantiated parts up until 127 which is a total of 128 so in the next part we will um, manipulate the y offset of this grid and also add some colors